Welcome gang, in today's video I'll be showing you another tester which I consider a must have if you enjoy working with LEDs or for testing and repairing laptop LED screens, LED televisions, the backlights in them, or LED lighting. This tester automatically identifies the correct output voltage of all kinds of LEDs and LED strips and you can see it displays the output voltage right here the correct voltage to power those LEDs and this is extremely lightweight and compact there's no need to carry around or use a bulky power supply unit which you would have to gradually increase the output voltage until the LEDs turn on this unit makes it extremely simple and this is a closer look at the unit this end here plugs right into your AC power supply and you can input up to 265 volts AC in my case I use 120 this came with an adapter but instead of using the adapter to go from European I just cut it off because I had so many of these plugs laying around to make it 120 volts AC for use in the United States now there are no batteries inside this unit not necessary over here is your positive and negative going to your probes. The probes are very, very nice, comfortable, and good quality. The output voltage on this particular model will go all the way up to 315 volts. Now, these are sold on many websites, but a lot of them only go to 250, 220, 270, some say 300. This one does go to 315 and I will be placing a link in the video description area just like I do with everything else I show on this channel to save you some money and you can also support my channel if you did decide to purchase one of these units. The unit automatically senses the correct amount of voltage and current to supply to an LED or LED strip. You can also use this to identify groups of LEDs within a light fixture so it's extremely useful and you don't have to worry about getting shocked because when this is powered up you can touch each one of the probes with your hands and you can even go like this and if I do this I get a slight tingle sensation nothing bad but you can touch each one at a time and experience no shock at all it does have isolation protection and you can also connect the LEDs in reverse it will not damage them and even if you shorted the probes together momentarily you should not have any problem I did test it held it for a few seconds released a few seconds released no problem at all but it does not recommend leaving them for a long time shorted because you may damage the unit let me power it up and show you exactly how it works the units powered up and you can see 315 volts I touch each one squeezing it tight no problem at all and together you get a little bit of a tingling sensation there's really no reason for me to be doing what I'm doing and I live in Florida so my fingers are a little damp from the humidity if you're in a dry climate you probably wouldn't even feel anything if you're like me and you salvage a lot of things from trash especially LED lighting or if you repair computer monitors or television backlights this will come in extremely handy we're going to be testing individual LEDs chip on board or cob LEDs an LED backlight from a computer monitor and an LED panel that was used in an exterior light this is the cob LED this right over here I found in the trash it was inside of a light no clue what the voltage is and it's not even marked over here is a piranha LED and this right here is a strip of LEDs that was removed from a 15 inch laptop I put together this nice little device with variable brightness you can go underneath a cabinet or behind the wall to give you a very nice downlight I have a video showing how I made this it's right over here click on the circle with the eye and you'll know exactly how to make one of these if you have access to a broken laptop now as I said earlier you could touch this together 
momentarily. You should not have any problems. Just don't keep it there for a very long time. You could touch each probe, no problem at all. And you could touch both and you feel a little bit of a tingle, but nothing bad. Now this panel right here does have markings on it for 12 volts. Many of them don't. So if you're going through the trash, you find items, you have no clue what they are. For the operating voltage, you can connect this up. All right, and then you go the other way if it doesn't work. And there you go. And you can see it's showing 11 volts on that. So the 11 volts is the minimum to average voltage to drive this little panel. Over here is the piranha, and that's the way it goes there. So let me try one there. That's backwards, flip it around. And you can see 3.1 volts for that. This one right over here, let's go between there and here. And it's doing nothing, so we're backwards. When you use this, the LEDs start off dim, then they reach a maximum intensity, and then they settle back. So let's try this. Right there is very intense. And you can see 16.3. Each one of these you can check now individually. Touch it right there. There it goes. 5.3. 5.3, you can go to each one. Now we identified at least 16 volts is required to drive this little chip panel. Over here is the big panel. This does have a marking, a lot of them don't. It says maximum input of 112. Let's see what the minimum to average voltage is that's required to drive this panel. All right, touch that there. You see it's dim, very bright, and it levels back off a little bit. 85 volts. You can also test each one of the LEDs individually or try and find out which one of these LEDs is part of a group. You might have a group of six or a group of eight, and they're all placed in parallel on that board. Let's take a look at the strip light. I'm going to put the positive over here. Connect it. And let's touch on the end. Look at that, 24.1. And then you can go to each individual one. All right, there's two, three. You can see the voltage going higher, 10.1. And I think this one uses group of six. And then I think this changes. No, nope, that's seven. And then the whole thing comes on. Then you have another group of six or seven. And you'll be able to see if any of these LEDs are blown inside that backlight screen. So if you take the wire from the LED strip inside your television or computer monitor, disconnect it from the harness, connect up this device, you'll see if the screen comes on. It may not go on full brightness, but enough to let you know that the LEDs are not the problem and the power supply for the LED strip is the problem. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.